Honda has an incredibly long and diverse racing history on two wheels, from as slow as 50cc single and twin cylinders, up to the queen of motorcycle racing, the 1000cc MotoGP class and their top-notch V5 Big Bang design. Honda underwent an amazing experience in the 1960s racing with so many different racing machines and eventually be the first manufacturer to win all five classes of the series. The 50, 125, 250, 350 and 500 cc. It helped Honda gain a lot of recognition. They almost had the 1966 500 cc victory in hand, eventually losing to a more superior MV Agusta 500 free cylinder. For the 1967 season, Honda decided to withdraw from motorcycle racing and moved more energy into automobile production. In fact, Honda moved two-thirds of the motorcycle development personnel into the automotive division. During Honda's hiatus, two strokes were experiencing great times, majorly winning season by season. Honda intended to return as they were lagging behind with a new technology development, but since Soichiro Honda hated two strokes, the new motor had to be really really good four stroke. It was announced in 1977 that there is a 500cc GP by coming for the 1979 season. The project was dubbed the NR, New Racing, consisting of about 100 men working on it, a young staff who dared to try something new. It was found that there was no significant power gap between a two-stroke and a four-stroke and four strokes were capable of winning races, but the simplicity of the two stroke meant a 20 kg lighter engine. Honda was aware that at least to stand a chance against two strokes, their task was to make a 20,000 rpm four stroke a minimum. It was also found that to reach that, a number of 8 valves per cylinder were required. The regulations allowed for four cylinders at most, but Honda tricked it with oval pistons using twin connecting rods that could accommodate up to 8 valves atop the piston, essentially being a 4 cylinder V8. They certainly knew it would most likely be a disaster, but Honda says that if there is even a tiny chance for a success, it is worth a shot. The concept was launched with a twin valve single cylinder, the KOO, to see whether it was even possible to seal off the combustion chamber and work with the oval piston design. Initially, it was found that beyond 10,000 rpm the engine would self-destruct as the con rods would distort, causing the piston pin assembly to break. After more testing and improvements, it evolved into an 8-valve unit, the KO. There were various issues overall, machining the pistons, honing the block and the plain machining accuracy of the whole engine had to be extremely tight. The single cylinder Ada valve worked, hence the V4 development began. It was never test ridden on a racetrack and the team needed to see a real world performance. The first usable engine, the OX, was ready late during the season in July 1979. It was a 100 degree V4 running at 16,000 rpm making 100 horsepower. The team suffered from various issues with the bike, barely making it through qualifications. The NR500 was 2 seconds lagging behind the competition and that was a pure disappointment. After some modifications, two more problems occurred. The V4 had a very powerful engine brake which seemed ok on a test bench, but a disaster on the tarmac. This caused the rear wheel to slip excessively during downshifting and braking and the solution was the first ever back torque limiter. It is commonly known as a slipper clutch and later first used on a production bike, the Honda VF750F. The 
second issue was enormous torque, making corner exiting tricky. Even different types and shapes of throat bullies could not help. This was before manufacturers started experimenting with a big bang firing order. At the beginning, the OX was 20 kg lighter than an average two-stroke, but to gain durability, more material was added and as many competitors started using magnesium and titanium, Honda could not chase a weight advantage anymore. Engineers had a headache from failing timing gears as well, and nothing helped but a cam damper, which subsequently resulted in higher power too. The next generations of the engine, the 2X and 3X, were a lot more reliable, making the calculated horsepower output from the early stage of the development at about 135 horsepower at 19,500 rpm. The NR500 even won a 1981 Suzuka 500km race, though the GP was still a struggle and left Honda unimpressed with their new racing bike. The 3X engine achieved 95% maturity, according to Honda, but that was in 1983 and the new two-stroke Honda NS500 was already making impressive achievements during its first years, leaving the NR500 in the dust. To create anything, you must put your heart and soul to it, said Toshimitsu Yoshimura, a Honda NR500 engineer. When I look back at it, I am not sure if we were experimenting with cutting-edge technologies or obsessed with foolish ideas. In 1983, they could at least look over the shoulder and be proud of what they eventually developed. The cherry on the cake is a 1992 Honda NR750, the only production bike using the oval piston technology. It had some cool features, like the slipper clutch, which are now standard equipment on modern bikes. That was certainly a huge victory for Honda.